in this course, we'll talk about many corporate decisions. Investment decisions, financing decisions, acquisition decisions, okay? So at this point, it's very important for us to discuss what is the objective of the firm, right? What is the objective of the company? If they are making these decisions, which variable uh, are, the, are the companies maximizing? Which variable are they looking at, okay? You know, an idea that seems to make sense is that since companies are owned by shareholders, they should be maximizing shareholder wealth, or in other words, maximizing the stock price. Okay? So maximizing the stock price is the objective of the corporation. What I want to do now is to really discuss this idea with you and think about whether that makes sense or not. Okay? The first uh, thing that you might be thinking is that uh, maximizing a stock price seems to be a little bit short-sighted, right? The stock price is a current measure. It's a measure of the current value of the firm. Whereas, you know, you, if you're concerned about shareholder wealth, you might also be worried about the future. What's going to happen in the future? If we maximize the current stock price, perhaps we're not maximizing shareholder wealth. Okay? But think about the following. What determines the stock price? This is something that you might have, have covered in a previous course, or if not, that's the, that's the right time for us to discuss this. It's a very important idea in finance. Okay? The stock price should be the discounted sum of all future cash flows. So the, 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 the stock price of a company today should depend on everything that is going to happen in the future. Okay? So the stock price should reflect all the consequences of any decision that a company takes today. It's a forward-looking measure. Okay? So that is why, if you think about it, you know, even though it's a current measure, it's also, it also reflects the future, right? So it's, it, 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 it makes more sense. Once you think of stock prices as the discounted sum of future cash flows, it starts making more sense that companies can look at stock prices. Okay? Let's think about this idea. Do stock prices really reflect information about the future? Okay? So that is the idea we just posed. It. Is there a way we can look at data to see that? A very useful uh, um, uh, example to consider is the market reaction to merger announcements. Okay, let me give an example here. That is an example we're going to talk about more in our, uh, um, in our module 4 when we, when we discuss acquisitions. Okay, so uh, on, on the September 4th of 2001, Hewlett Packard announced that it was going to buy Compaq. Okay, so it's an announcement. It announces to the financial press, to analysts, that this merger is going to happen. The merger hasn't happened yet. In fact, this merger was highly contested. Okay? The shareholders of Hewlett Packard were not happy about that, that uh, merger. Okay? And the merger ended up being completed almost a year later. Okay? But check this graph. Right on September 4th, when the merger was announced, this is what happened to stock price. Okay? So this is the data for September 4th, okay? The stock price immediately dropped, okay? It is a current measure, but the moment that this new information came into to, to the market, the stock price reacted to that, okay? Why did the stock price drop? The stock price dropped because, as we just discussed, shareholders did not like the merger, right? They thought that the merger was not going to add to the value of the company, what the market does is the market reacts immediately to, to, to that piece of information. So you're not waiting for future profits to come in. The market's not waiting to try to figure out what's happened. You're, you're immediately reacting to any corporate decision. Okay? So that is, you know, this, is, this, this supports this idea that stock prices really reflect future, and it's a variable that managers should be looking at. Okay? An important notion here is the role of efficient markets. Right? So the, this idea that we just posed that, that the stock price reflects any, uh, all consequences of any decision that a company takes today, it relies on the assumption that markets are efficient, right? If the market is efficient, then the stock price should be exactly equal to that. Of course, markets are not perfectly efficient, right? So the stock price is not always going to be a perfect measure of shareholder value. There is going to be a discrepancy between stock prices and shareholder wealth. 
So at this point, we have to think about, are there good alternatives? Is there something else we can look at? Okay? Let's talk about earnings per share. This is a commonly uh, reported measure of profitability for companies. What it is, it's just the current earnings, the current net income of the company, divided by the number of shares outstanding. Okay? So you're looking at current profits and dividing current profits by shares outstanding. Right? And the question I want you to think about is, can that replace a stock price? Okay? Will maximizing earnings per share maximize current shareholder wealth or not? Or are there problems with earnings per share? If you think about this for a while, you will see that the answer is no. Okay? Now we're going to have a problem of, short, of short-termism, right? Earnings per share are only going to measure current profits. Okay? So if you're maximizing current earnings per share, then you are completely ignoring the future. There's no way you can capture future profits just by looking at earnings per share. Okay? Later on in this uh, model, we are going to talk about profitability measures, right? And actually, one, one uh, concept that we're going to learn is that there may even be better measures of profitability. There are problems with earnings per share that, that make it, in, in uh, my view, that make it a problematic measure of profitability. Okay? So on top of this problem that it ignores uh, uh, future, EPS is also problematic as a measure of profit. So uh, it's definitely not a, 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 you know, an adequate alternative. And here is an interesting example, again, from the merger world. Okay? So that's a more recent merger. On uh, July of 2015, the uh, Silgene, which is a biotech company, announced a deal to buy another company called Receptus. Okay? And this deal was uh, welcomed by the market. So the market liked this one. Okay? The stock market reacted positively to the deal. Silgene's stock price went up substantially. Okay? $115 to $135. But at the same time, the management announced that the deal was going to reduce earnings per share. For several years, for four years, it would take four years for this deal to generate profits. Still, the, sto the stock price went up. Okay? So think about that. What does that mean? Right? It means that the market really is considering these long-term effects of the merger in order to figure out whether this merger is adding value to the company or not. Okay? EPS, the fact that EPS is going to, read, to go down now seems to not matter as much when, uh, when uh, uh, the, the stock market is trying to estimate the value of this deal. Okay? So that's an example of a situation where stock prices and EPS are really departing from each other. Another alternative you might think about is the book value per share. Okay? So the book value of, of equity, you know, one uh, advantage may be that this is an accounting value, right? So it's, uh, it, 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 it goes to, to auditing. It's a number that, that, is, that, is, that, is, uh, that is easy to verify. Okay? The problem, of course, is going to be similar to earnings per share. The book value of equity does not reflect future profits. Okay? The, the book value of equity reflects mostly what happened in the past, not the future. So if we maximize the book value of equity, again, we're going to be completely missing this future. Uh, uh, you know, to, it, it's, it's going to lead to short-termism. It might lead to wrong decisions. Okay? Bottom line is that you know, maximizing stock prices is the lesser evil. Even if markets are not perfectly efficient, at least you have a hope that the stock price is capturing information about the future. Okay? That doesn't mean the stock price is a perfect measure. As we're going to talk now, there are problems. These problems arise mostly because maximizing shareholder wealth may not be compatible with uh, 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 the, the welfare of society as a whole and other stakeholders in the firm. So that's the next topic we're going to discuss.